Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Victoire. I am your host, Emir. Before we begin today, I ask that you kindly subscribe to our channel, like, and share our videos. It helps us share these stories with greater number of people. Today's guest is certainly one of the most charismatic wrestlers in the modern era. He's also got a tremendous mind for the business. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a former WWE Tag Team Champion, and he has been quite the story maker in the NWA. Today's guest, Aaron Stevens. Victoire. Sponsored by California's own Clark's Nutrition and Natural Foods Market for all your organic produce, healthy foods, and supplement needs. California's own trusted tattoo company and mobile body art bus 760 645 0485. If you're looking to advertise with style, then look no further than one of Southern California's premier advertising magazines, Your Villa Magazine, 951 990 8855. Catch up with all the latest news in the Fulbrook and Temecula areas with Valley News. MyValleyNews.com, 760-723-7319. Wear casual clothing that makes you feel like a million dollars. Or if you are seeking custom t-shirts, look no further than J Money Clothing, 760-367-8566. Palm Springs, California, Indian Wells, California, Rancho Mirage, California. They're all considered a destination hotspot, a second home haven. With an exquisite record of negotiating the finest deals for clients, Lowell Folsom III and Associates always deliver. Contact Lowell today at 760-391-2504. Okay, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Victoire. I am your host, Emir, and today I am joined by a one of the most charismatic men in modern professional wrestling. He truly has a great mind for the business. He's a former WWE Tag Team Champion. He's one of the greatest storytellers in the NWA currently. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Stevens. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> of course. Thanks. Grand introduction for a great, great professional. Very kind of you to say. Absolutely. All right. So, Aaron, uh, I want to take a trip down memory lane, if you would, please, and uh, let everybody know a little bit about your early life, some of your dreams and aspirations as a youth, where you grew up, and then how you discovered pro wrestling. All right. Um, here's what happened. And this may not be the grandiose tale that... Um, you know, a lot of people have and in terms of this magical way, how they get into wrestling. Um, it's funny because actually looking back on this now, the very fact of like how I get into wrestling and by, by how I got into wrestling, it's literally when I made my mind up to do it. Okay. Um, I was about five years old. Wow. I was in the department store with my mother. Okay. Um, she uh, gave me a quarter if I, if I behaved myself. Um, you know, those old school arcade games that, you know, I was such a kid. I remember having this like stand on the stool. It was a, a vividly, I remember this. It was like yeah. the, the one game just happened to be a wrestling game okay. by happenstance. And I was so young, I was with the controllers and let's just say I did the job pretty quick. Yeah. And I remember the, um, that little miscreant just taunting me. Okay. And I was, I was like, well, that's it. And I said, well, I'm going to be a wrestler now. Like, you know, screw that guy. Yeah. Um, and then I remember I got home and I just made up my mind. Now, my father uh, was a police officer. He just retired two years ago. He had, you know, 44 years on the floor. Crazy. Wow. Um, but his partner at the time just happened to be a pro wrestler. He was like kind of getting involved. He was 6'8", 350 plus pounds. Um, or, you know, he may have even flirted with the 400s for a while. Uh, his name was Primo Manzello. All right. And I remember, like, Primo would come over, and it was like, whatever, I wouldn't care. But then I saw him on TV wrestling Ricky Steamboat, and I'm like, okay, wait a minute. And I was putting two and two together, so I then, all right, I'm just going to be a wrestler. And then life went on, 
Okay. You know, I did martial arts when um when I was a kid, and that was always kind of cool. I've always, I you know excelled at that to a degree. Yeah. Um, and then if anything though, it kind of got me you know because I'm like six four, it's got me just kind of really used to my body and, and my, you know awareness and things like that. Mm-hmm. And then um prior to that, um you know like or prior to me getting into wrestling, which is kind of funny, um. You know, my, my friend and I built a ring in his backyard. We had entrances, production. We were actually were the best produced backyard fed yeah. uh, I've ever seen. Because, I mean, we had a ramp, stage lights. And I'm talking, this is this is 97. Wow. Okay, 96, 97. Yeah. Um, then one fateful night, uh, we were at an independent wrestling show. And um, I remember I asked Tony Atlas, or we, we were going to get in the business at the time. Hey, how do you get into wrestling? And he was like, let me introduce you to the Boston Bad Boy. Boston Bad Boy Tony Rumble. It was an NWA show. First okay. independent wrestling show I ever went to was an NWA show, which was, and that's when I that's what got me into business. Oddly enough, so like to kind of go yeah. around. And my first match was at an NWA ring for NWA New England, but more on that later. Yeah. Um, which is wild. I've never actually thought of that. Like, yeah, yeah. the the show that I've, you know, that that I asked the question, I took the first step. Yeah. Was an NWA show. Um, yeah. crazy. And so after that, um. You know, we asked, oh, okay, Tony Rumble. He goes, I'm going to introduce you to Walter. Now, that being Killer Kowalski, who trained Primo Manzello, my father's partner. So I had this weird relationship with him. And um, I'll never forget it. Wait around the end of the night, and he took us out. The It was a, a Southbridge High School. And it was snowing out. And there was like that one neon orange light. And I could see the silhouette of Killer. And if, if you... Are not familiar with Killer, there's no mistaking his silhouette, let's just say. Um, and then he was like, All right, here's my business card, come up to the school. And we were, you know, like, Oh my God, this is crazy. So we, we ended up going up and I ended up, you know, doing that, uh, kind of going to the school. Yeah. I was 16 at the time and I was the youngest student he ever had. Like my parents had to sign up for missions and everything. And it was, uh, it was very interesting because. Getting into the wrestling business at 16 years old, and that it, it is not the wrestling business that it is today. There, right. there was a, and there is a stark, stark difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is, is, again, this isn't good, bad, and different. This just is how it is. Yeah. Back when I got into it, I mean, you know, again, late 90s, it was still the mafia. Okay. Nowadays, it's a public pool. Okay. Anyone can join. People looked at me at 16, and I mean, I, I got the the crap beat out of me, right? But it was also weird, because like in high school, I was a little bit bigger than everybody else, and kind of like a stud, you know? Yeah. Um, and like, you know, no one messed with me or anything. And yeah, I played football, but like I was mainly a wrestling guy, and, and just, you know, I was doing this, the pro wrestling stuff, which was kind of funny, because it when it started to boom then, all of a sudden, I was like, oh, whoa, you know? And um, so yeah, that was crazy, just kind of getting trained that way. Um, and then it was also... On a much, much deeper level. Mm-hmm. And um, this this is, you know, it, it's funny because in life we're always evolving, right? Like that's the yeah. one thing where, you know, we, we can, I, I, I'm a very good goal setter. Okay. You know, if I truly set my mind to a goal, there's no way it's not going to be like, you know, WWE, okay, I have to get over. Whatever mm-hmm. they give me, I'm going to get over. There's no there's no question about it. Like simply like failure does not exist. It's not, you know, there's no, um, but then, you know, at the same time, like for me to say, I really want to do something, I have to be honest with myself and Hey, I tell you what, what goes on inside here, it takes a lot to get my attention. Let's say, um, (laughs) my brain's an interesting place to be. Um, so, so it's like, okay. So after that, you know, I uh, went to college, Started doing, you know, independently, kind of, you know, making a name and and listening to the right people, which is a big deal. Um, I had excellent, excellent coaching. From there, um, Dr. Tom saw me at the tryout camps, and then next thing I know, I'm in OBW developmental, mm. and here we go. So this is my first time living away from home, uh, Louisville, and they're paying me a, a de- very decent amount for a 21 year old, let's say. Yeah. And plus the signing bonus. I mean, life was just great. Yeah. And, uh, but then I learned a lot of life lessons, right? Um, you know, I, I was so focused on my goal that, I mean, I never really did like the, like my friends had this, like, like, and, and I'm still friends with, um, with some of the people I went to high school with and everything. Okay. Um, but like, 
and I say friends, like there's one that I really talk to that's like really, you know, a close friend. Um, and um, and then I keep in touch with everyone else through him and vice versa. So like I still, you know, it's one of those. And then when I'm home, like we may hang out once every five years or something like that. Yeah. Um, but then like, you know, you you have this. Like, like you're in this, you're in the same experience, right? But from the time I was a junior, like my life experience was starkly different than everyone else's to where I figured out, I mean, and, and you, you know, in addition to how the wrestling business was back then, like, you know, when people say work and, and, and work is, is a, it's a misused term. It's a misinterpreted term, Right. You know, people say, oh, yeah, let's work. Like some people, oh, yeah, let's go fake fight, right? Like, no, that's not working. That is not working. Mm -hmm. Working is getting people to do what you want them to do, Mm -hmm. right? We want fans to give us their money. So we have to entertain them and grab their interest to a degree, right? Yeah. Not necessarily in that order. I mean, obviously the reverse order, but, um, you know, we have to do that. And I figured out, okay, well, what do my teachers want? All right, I need to tuck my shirt in, not be obnoxious, smile, and I'll probably not even have to study. And guess what? I was right. I mean, I studied a little bit, but it was, and I mean, you have to have some understanding of the material, but I mean, who doesn't love like Shakespeare and everything? Math was never my subject. So I convinced my principal, or I'm sorry, the headmaster, whom everyone didn't like because we had a headmaster for three years um i won't say that he was a priest and he looked just like willy wonka gene wilder and oh, wow. there was some i tell you what you go to his office and whew, yeah. You know, yeah there was there was some smells coming out of there if you know what i'm saying <laughs> so you went um, to you went to a catholic school oh yes yes um and now i am still catholic and i got saint benedict i mean that's just the uh you know what can i say you know the uh, the Catholic guilt. Over, I'm I'm kidding, but uh, <laughs> it's um. So I okay. So here here's where uh, where I was going with that. Like where <clears throat> you know I said, hey, this is what I'd like to work on. Blah blah blah. And I didn't have to take math my senior year simply because I understood what he expected and wanted. And I simply like said, okay, you know, because when we're we're young we kind of have this, this innate instinct to rebel, right. Which is a biological thing. And and not that I didn't go through that. I did. I still am to a degree, but um, like when I like the wrestling business, it smartened me up to be able to blend in anywhere Mm -hmm. and have a conversation and at least, you know what I mean? And and just carry yourself a certain way. Yeah. Um, And again, like when you do it too much, it's called being carny, but it is the same thing that politicians do. Mm-hmm. It is the same thing that actors do. Mm-hmm. It is the same thing that anyone does when they're trying to ascend some kind of, you know, structure yeah. uh, to a degree, right? Or, or hierarchy or, you know, kind of whether it's industrial or artistic or something like that. Like when you're trying to come up in the game, as we say in the USA, um, you know, you got to know what rules you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You got to number one, you got to know the rule book. And then you got to use it. Yeah. And and that's at the end of the day, and, and I've had God ups and downs and everything in between, that one life skill has given me what I have today. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But, Just... Yeah. And here's the thing. I'm at a point now where it can be genuine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, to where like Look, if I don't want to work with someone, I will like that's like with NWA, I was done with wrestling and all like completely. Yeah. And NWA has been the best thing for me, um, both personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I tell you what, to work with the people you do, I don't know if you've seen the reality show at all. Um, it's Billy Corgan's Adventures in Carnyland, yes. CW yeah. streaming, check it out. Um, it's getting rave reviews, yeah. but like there's just a like because c- as a company what we've been through and um we joke you know we're the island of misfit toys but the reality of nwa is that we're all broken toys mm-hmm. but 
what society is trying to do and in, in terms of wrestling and even culturally um to a degree uh we we are a family friendly show we are a show for everyone from the wrestling fan to the fan of drama right to you know um and we use our brokenness and we highlight it like yeah. what makes us us what what makes us to whatever yeah for anywhere else yeah like why are we here right like that's the question like why are we all our nwa we all we obviously like we're like it or not and I, I don't care what you say we are the modern day ecw in the sense of like we are counterculture and there's yeah. you cannot argue that like that's not something like if you look at impact or tna uh you, know, you got wwe aw um ml whatever right we are counterculture now yeah. some people whatever but you know what we have stayed true to the vision and the interesting thing is like we're we're not trying to be like oh yeah we're going to be the next wave and everyone's gonna... no you know what we're trying to do we are trying to focus on us we're not worried about other people like we're able to go to Dothan, Alabama and get close to 3,000 people, you know, on the, the show we've had in those three letters. Yeah. And we're able to deliver to where, like, the floor is almost already sold out for the December show. We're able to go to Sarasota, you know, 2,500 people plus. Yeah. Right? Sure. And we're going there again, you yeah. know, and we're on point to sell more. Like, what is going on with us? You know what I mean? Like, we, we have the studio uh and then like when when we're hitting these towns there is still that middle america just like you don't want to have anything pushed down your throat mm -hmm. right we do not shove women down like the audience's throat to where it becomes almost condescending you know yeah. what we do we have amazing women mm -hmm. and we just say hey here's some tv time go do you yeah. our women's vision is incredible yeah. It is yeah. absolutely incredible. And, but we don't like, again, they are part of the show because it, and like we, we have this, this interesting thing. I, I, am I getting off tangent here? But uh, a little bit, but Aaron, I'm going to let you go because I know you're passionate and I'm passionate too. The NWA is a great product. So yeah, I'll let yeah, you go. Um, but like, well, this will save us time in the back end. <laughs> so, you know, we, we have this reputation of being a very welcoming locker room. Like when, when people come to NWA, they're like, wow, you guys are chill. And it is. But then when it comes time to do business, you actually watch us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're we're far bigger than the average roster. Yeah. And we're hitting each other hard. And, you know, it's, it's old school smash mouth wrestling yeah. with a 2024 flavor. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, you... Yeah. And you've got that uh, awesome, you know, storytelling, psychology. You've got a lot of that. And I think that's what, you know, again, separates you from the rest of the pack. Uh, I've mm -hmm. had many conversations with legends, you know, and they've said, hey, you know, all these guys focus on now is spots. There's no psychology behind it anymore. Mm -hmm. But you guys have that. And that's one of the remarkable traits. And like you said, family entertainment. The whole family can enjoy it. Yeah, because wrestling, like and I, I tell people, when you want to be a good wrestler, right yeah join the olympics yeah. pretty much straightforward yeah we are and, and the problem today there are too many wrestlers that want to be on tv mm -hmm. there aren't enough television stars who wrestle there is a very very big difference very big difference you yeah. know um i think it was road dog or brian james made the, the comment like and I, I didn't know who it was, but he said, like, I'm a better sports entertainer than that person, right? Mm -hmm. Fans got mad. No, he actually is. Because if you look at the numbers he did, truly, and his ability to not rely on moves, to have a crowd eaten out of the palm of his hand, there you go. And if you look at the extent of time that he did it, mm -hmm. right, and can still do it today from what I see, that is a, that is a television star who wrestles and you know there's this weird like oh respect the business and you gotta but yeah but you gotta know what the business is mm -hmm. yeah i agree with you I, any I, idiot can put a headlock on yep right person, it takes yeah first person who said that and we've got to look at what brought it to the dance i mean what i presume you i think we're almost the same age um so i grew up watching it in the early 90s 91 i was at SummerSlam 92 and they were TV stars. That's what made it this international phenomenon. 
And then we kind of got away from that a little bit, but obviously not the NWA, you know, I'm, I'm glad that it's, it's come back to the forefront. What brought it to the dance has come back through the NWA. It's yeah. Fun. Cause it's like-minded people. And, you know, and, and again, so we'll go back to my, my life story. So I'm, I'm in OVW. And at that time, again, learning so many life lessons, whoo, um, but professionally under Cornette's learning tree, like under like Rip Rogers, whom had it not been for Rip Rogers, my in-ring would not be what it is today um, in terms of just everything you do, you may count believable, you know what I mean? Psychology. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Danny Davis, just his kind of knowledge and, and patience, Dr. Tom, and working with a bunch of people. You know, I, I was Nova and I were tag champs right when I got down there. Um, so Jimmy had, like, from the from the day I got to OVW, Jim Cornette had my back, took care of me. Um, and, and again, he's a controversial figure. Mm -hmm. Um and if you ask anyone in the business, and I'm not going to say who knows what they're talking about, because that's a very weird statement, who has made serious money, serious money. Like, not because, you know, oh, promotion, like, no, but because, like, they've traveled around and have that credibility to their name. They will tell you, like, what Jimmy says is right. Yeah. You know, if not everything, most of it. Um, and that, like, that the fact that no one wants to listen today, that's why wrestling is becoming a lost art. And, you know, again, like the, the, the kind of wrestling, like if you look at wrestling itself, when, when television first came out, you had the news and you had wrestling wrestlers were the first TV stars, right? It was cheap to produce. You set up a camera yeah. in an arena and let, let the action unfold and do a couple interviews right mm -hmm. now. Now you have the birth of gorgeous George, yeah. you know, um, and and boom, here we go. We're off to the races. Yeah. So, look, you have to have that legitimate side of you, right? Where you like, yeah, to be a good wrestler, you probably have had, you know, to get in a fight or two just to kind of know what it's like, yeah. and not not yeah. some of the fights I've seen on security cameras, but like real fights. Yeah. Um, like, like, and, and you just gotta, you know what I mean? Have some kind of ground right and like to, to base it off of and yeah. you have to have skill and you have to have technique mm -hmm. but you also have to have showmanship yeah mm -hmm. and that's the that's the magic combination right um you put those two things together that's a pretty dangerous combo mm -hmm. but it's a television star who wrestles like i can wrestle so good like like the difference between pros and everyone else pros are brilliant at the basics not good Right. Like, and, and if someone's all, well, you don't do um, hurricanranas and you don't do planches and everything. No, but you know what I can do? I can go into any arena in the world with anyone and in one minute have that arena booing the crap out of me and keeping them throughout an entire match to where when the finish happens, my finish compared to your finish will not compare. Yeah, That's definitely. what I do. And I, I will put that against anybody. Sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, but, ha you know, that being said, like the art of it is the coolest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And to, to see some of these kids kind of like start learning now and, and start, you know, cause I'm in this weird place in my career where I was just, I was done with wrestling acting was going, it's been up and down. Like, uh, you know, I, I've been in a couple of things that I've done really well. Um, and, um, but of course the show gets canceled and it's like, Oh, whatever. But there's the possibility for another one. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's such a strange thing. Like, you know, um, the, the stuff I've been doing, I've been on a, um, a, a, you know kind of it was a prime time talk show and it's uh it's fun with you know with tyrus um so to go and gut fill with him and just kind of do what we do because that's that's very much like you know being back in the locker room yeah and that's yeah. that was the best part of nwa um like that's what kept a bunch of us coming back was that like we got to go hang out yeah. and see the boys because that's something that you know when you don't have it all the time like when i was out in la mm -hmm. um it was an interesting period in my life and like I realized like what was missing out there because I was in this world and I would I, I would see, you know, again, Tyrus and then um, you know, Santino and everybody, but like it wasn't the same, you know, as as you had that consistency. Um 
And it's just really, really nice to be able to kind of have like, you know, that, like that's what was missing out of my life because no matter which way I cut it and I've, I've come to terms with this at this stage in my life, it's taken me long enough. Um, that like wrestling will always be a major part of who I am. And, and, it, and it shaped me going back to my high school for, you know, yeah, it shapes how I look at the world, right. Mm -hmm. To where, you know, you don't have to be so, so brash and, and like, you can like finesse, yeah. but you know, a readiness to be tenacious mm -hmm. is like the best combo of, about, you know, getting an objective done. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, I don't want to have to, I don't have to make this unpleasant, you know, like, what can I do for you? You know? And then that's that give and take, that's what it is. Right. Like, all right, you're going to put me on TV. I yeah. may not like the script, but watch this. Yeah. Right. Like that's the trade off. Yeah. But your comparisons there. I mean, I was thinking of Los Angeles. I lived in LA in the past and yeah, you know, it can be a very lonely place. And like you said, without that consistency, like you would have had on the road with wrestling. Yeah. I could see yeah, it, totally vast different, but in the world of pro wrestling, you get the best of everything because like you said, you are a TV star. You're with your, your boys yeah. you're, you're constantly creative. It's not a stop start thing. It's, you know, there's no off season which we've heard many times. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can see your appeal. Now, as a youth, were you very artistically inclined? I remember I was in first grade and uh, there was like an art project. They were trying to teach abstract art. And I did this thing with these colors and swirls and everyone was like, oh my God, what's that? My art teacher was like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, and it was like a big deal. And then I did a poem the following year for Thanksgiving. And it was like in the paper or something. But I guess I was never truly encouraged by my parents to pursue that. Um, and I, that's no like fault of theirs. I just think they didn't. I mean, look, if I had me as a kid, I'd be worried about other things too, right? Than like pursuing. But but I, I always had like a propensity to like my brain can rhyme things very easy. Okay. Um, I just kind of I go into this weird place where I just like I let it like and I do that as a manager a lot. Like I'll yeah. uh, you know, I, I will. I'll spit it, you know what I mean, and oh, get yeah. with it. Like I kind of, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got um, your your mic skills, Aaron. Are, I mean, they are fantastic. Again, oh, you, you can go back and look at someone like Jake the Snake, and you know, mm -hmm. he was another one who was great on the mic. And that, and again, that's a huge point too that a lot of people aren't focusing on these days in pro wrestling is their ability to talk on the mic. You know, is so important. No, it is. Um, and, and, you know, again, and I like a bit of advice that I always tell with NWA, like, you know, I'll, I'll tell my kids like, hey, if you want to do a good wrestling promo, the secret to it is don't do a wrestling promo. Because like, you know, everyone follows the same cadence and tonight. And OK, and, and you know what? You can hit all the points and it can be awesome. And you can have great gear with as many rhinestones and you know bedazzling stars as possible whatever we call it yeah but sometimes if everything is formulaic nothing stands out and i i, I see that that's a it's never the one you think so i i begrudgingly you know we do some seminars and um not well so i'm working with exodus pro which is a a territory of the nwa okay. so ec3 has a great school up there those guys are doing it right i mean uh, i'm a big big fan of them and I've been working with them for a while on, um, you know, begrudgingly, I went first because I don't like traveling, but like, it's great because EC3 and I'll jump in the car yeah. and it's like being on the road again. And we're just, it's just a great time. And then to really see actually talent develop. Um, we were at a camp, right. And it was me, EC and Billy were there. We were like the three representatives. <laughs> so we've seen a bunch of, right. bunch of people uh, like talk and it was just late in the day. I did see Carson Drake. He was talking and I was like, wait a minute, stop it. Smile. And I go talk when you're smiling and like, okay, he was, he was there. But then there were these two ragamuffins yeah. that got up there and it was late in the night. I'm like, all right, whatever. And they start talking. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I perked up. I went, Oh my God. And there was about five seconds where you just saw like, oh my God, yes. And the only other person that popped his, his head up was Billy. And we like did a thing where like, we looked, we were kind of like across the room, but like we looked at each other and we were like, just like, okay. And then like EC3 
like he's like okay yeah like I, I get it I get it let's go so he he puts them on the show yeah and they just like I I told him right after that I went look you guys both look like by the way I'm talking about a tag team called the Slime Balls the Slime okay <laughs> and I looked at them and I went you both look like everything I am against in wrestling. I think you are the embodiment of everything wrong with the industry today. But for some reason, I like you, and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I talk to them, right? Because you don't know. Someone can be good in the ring, but you have, to, you have to talk to them. Yeah. And again, and the ability to assess people, right? Because if you want to kind of break it down, we're like, you know, again, part of working. And, and again, every person that is kind of high up in their profession has this that sign. You have to be able to read someone fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, so I'm talking to them and I'm asking them quite, I'm like, okay, all right. Excuse me. Um, and then they end up getting contracts, right? And then they, they're, they're doing excellent. And, um, but, but they're, again, they're not, you know, bodybuilders. Right. Um, they're not Daniel Bryan in the ring. You know, they could be someday. Yeah. But on television, and, and I say this lovingly with them, and they know it. That's our joke. I went never, and I won't use the uh, the word I, I say with them, but never before in the history of humanity have two people ever looked so blank yet shine so bright on camera. Because it is, if you watch them, yeah. From a character standpoint, yeah. like they just they own the scene. Yeah, yeah. And and that's very like Carson. The same thing. When when Carson smiles and he's being that guy, mm -hmm. he owns it. Like he, you you cannot, you know, like you you can hang with him. And, and and I'm not talking about wrestling, right? Like there's there's better wrestlers than Carson in the slime balls. And but but again, they're getting better. But like. From a television standpoint, when they're on, you know, now now they have to work on that. And that's what I'm, you know, I'm, I'm far more a psychologist and a yeah. psychiatrist sometimes and sometimes a therapist for them yeah. than I am a wrestling coach. Um, but they're like, they're getting it all around because like we have guys like Trevor Murdoch who has taken on the role of like the in-ring guy that kind of keeps like the standard up yeah. of what's in the ring. Now we all help each other out. Like, like Trevor, well, hey, Aaron, character-wise, what about this? And like, you know, we we see the same stuff, and like, we don't step on each other's toes at all. It's like this weird kind of like everyone is just working for the betterment of the product. Yeah. And um, our egos take a back seat to the success of the company because, like, look, we're 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 on our own. Like, we're doing this from the ground up. We were with NWA when that company, like, when when Power first came out, we were heralded as one of the best things definitely the best show in a long time in wrestling oh yeah it was Those original powers you could not mess with that pandemic happened things happened but we kept going we kept going and we worked through it right we we did what we had to do and everyone kind of did their part and now people have shut up about us mm -hmm. critics aren't saying anything it went silent for a while now you kind of can't deny it because if you look at what we're doing, you know, numbers wise, not like, let's just look at numbers wise to guess what wrestling fans. We want wrestling fans to watch our product. We're, we're, but there's a lot of people who are falling in love with wrestling again. When, yeah. when you're, we're in Dothan and people are leaving saying, I can't believe this. I haven't seen wrestling like this since I was a kid. And these are people in their, you know, sixties. Yeah. Well, well, we're bringing everyone back. We're cutting, we're, when can we get tickets? And that that's what's going on. And then younger people are like, wait a minute, this is cool. You know, like to be able to interact. And then like when you cater towards the audience, it's yeah. amazing. You know who does it well is wow in terms of how they present their product. Yeah. You know, um, the uh, women of wrestling. Okay, women of wrestling. Okay. The way they present. Now look, again, wow is not, you know, considered like, oh, what's going on here and there? But no, you know what? Wow, wow is a television show about wrestling. Yeah, yeah. And so is Monday Night Raw. Yep. 
But I think I think coming back to what you said there, when power first started, I mean, I had been not interested in the business for years at that time. But power, I mean, obviously you got the ADW started around that time too. But I was excited to watch power. And it really took me back. Like you were saying, it brought someone back who grew up with it in the early 90s. And I yeah. love the 80s. And, yeah. and the stuff that you did with the question mark, God rest his soul. You know, that was, you know, that stuff was, I mean, that was gold. Everything that you guys were doing there. It was mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. So you really you were able to bring back that audience. But as you were speaking there, you really got a passion for coaching, it sounds like, today. Um, no, no, um, I don't. I actually hate it. I don't like wrestling. If we're being very honest, I, I, I would care not to talk about it mostly. That's why I do the character stuff. But um, no, what, here, here's what it is. Um, like I'll do seminars of like like Joe Kazana because he's another territory. Uh, Joe Kazana Promotions in uh, Southeast Tennessee. We just had a big big show there. Back to the territories, which went again. Um, you'll you'll see that all on um, the uh, NWA soon enough. We'll. we'll We'll get that out there. But like the people that are like wrestling's back. This is this is the greatest wrestling show we've seen. Blah, 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 blah. And that's what we want. Everyone's leaving the arena. Like, when are we when are we coming back? Like, this was great. Yeah. That's what we want. And and that's what we're getting. And that ultimately is again like what we have to keep keep doing. Yeah. So in order for that to happen, right? For me to justify a paycheck, like I cannot let talent go to waste. And yeah. you see some people with talent and you're like, okay, let's so like Joel will bring him for seminar and it's open to everyone, but it's definitely like, you're, you're going to learn the way I learned from like Cornette and Paul Heyman, like under their learning trees. Okay. Um, you're going to learn what works. E everything I teach is battle tested, mm -hmm. but then while I'm down there, right, we'll do a seminar but then it's like, okay, like the NWA guys that are in that church, okay, like now we're going to, you know, we're going to work now. Yeah. And then we like, we go over the finer points of and things because there's, there's a lot of teaching it shows, but then when we're trying to refine a character, yeah. what do we do? Um, you know, and then that's just like, that's the part of it. So Exodus Pro is a great place for that. Like again, Carson, the slime balls, mm -hmm. um, bunch of other people coming out of there, you know, that, that have made really a, a good impact and a good impression. And that's testament to EC3. Yeah. But in line with Billy's vision, it's uh, it's bringing back the magic. Like, that's what we want to do. And then, like, we, we use the word magic a lot, but that's what it, you know, bringing back the magic of pro wrestling is yeah. what, um, what, what our aim is as a company. Yes, and it's great. How much jurisdiction do the guys have over their characters? Like when they first come into NWA, do you allow them to bring in what they've been doing prior or do you try and shape them into another idea? Oh, they have everything unless I get a hold of them. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, no, no. Um, no, um, it is it is an environment where creativity is encouraged and creativity flourishes. And that's thanks to Billy and Pat. Okay. The talent has so much freedom. To where, I mean, th this is how old school we are. Mm -hmm. You know, for promos, it ain't written out. And it shows. You know I mean? And sometimes when, when you're doing a promo, you get what's going on. And like you, you get, okay, this is what it's about. Go. Yeah. So here's the thing. To be on NWA TV and be a character that has kind of stood the test of time, that has, has been on there for, let's say, longer than six months. Mm -hmm. you got to be good. Yeah. Or if, if you ain't be good, you gotta at least be passable, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that's that's the reality, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and it's again, it's bringing back the old way of doing it because because our show still has the old school feel. Yeah. Um, the original power set we love. Uh, this NWA though, it's it's truly when you watch it and you see an NWA show, you know it's an NWA show, right? It's not like. It's not like trying to be WWE light. Yeah. You know, it's the old school, like you said, early 90s, yeah. WWF with the lighting trusses and the, it looks awesome. And like, you know, again, it's, it's the 2024 version, yeah. LEDs and cool stuff. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, it's a wrestling show. Yeah. And you know exactly what I mean by that. Like, and then that's, that's what you're going to see. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the cool part. 
Yeah, that's very cool. But what you said there about the promos too, because now you've lived in both worlds. You were in WWE where they gave you a script. How much did that, did that direct, because obviously you're, you're extremely creative and like you said, your mind works a million miles an hour and you're able to, to do these things. Was that a hindrance to you or were you able to work through that fairly easily? I was able to work through it easily because I would go to whoever I had to go to and say, this was written for me. I completely understand the bullet points, but you could have stuck a bunch of chickens at typewriters and they could have pecked out a better script than this. 75% of the time. Okay. 25, like depending on the writer, Mike Notarelli, awesome. Um, great, great writer. Uh, there have been so many others. Um, you know, Matt was awesome. Um, you know, th there have been some good ones. Um, and, you know, that I've had the privilege. Steve Oppenheim. Loved working with Steve Oppenheim. Um, it's, <clears throat> you know what? Yeah, like you, you can take words, but, but it's not, people don't understand. And, and this is why I hate, the notion that like you have to have 20 million writers. It ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Mm -hmm. Right? To a degree. We're selling a wrestling match we're having at the Greensboro Coliseum. Right? And you and I are wrestling. Okay. That I gotta put behinds and seats. All right, let's go. Just let me say it. Okay. You know, because anything else, like yeah, the show is a work, mm -hmm. but you got to make the presentation authentic. Yeah, yeah. Right? You have to make the presentation authentic. Have to. And that's that's where a lot of people get lost. Mm -hmm. That's where they truly lose everything. Because, um, like, Mizdow was done, like, it wasn't slapstick. It was sarcasm. Mm -hmm. And that's why slapstick's only funny. If you see the same trick it becomes not as funny after a while, unless like the three stooges are doing it or something. But yeah. Um, Starcat, like people knew like what was going on behind the scenes with me and WWE. So, okay, fine. We'll watch this then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, let me make fun of your industry because, yeah. oh yeah, keep doing it. Fine. You know what I mean? That, that was it. I didn't, yeah. that's not something I asked permission for, mm -hmm. but it's something, you know, again, I had to keep within the parameters of, what does the TV show want? Okay. Mm -hmm. I had to serve the television show. Yeah. Yeah. Television show doesn't serve me. All right. All right. Because the second you have that perspective, you lose perspective. And then, you know, it, it usually does not end well. Yeah. So what was it? I mean, obviously I'm dumbfounded because I see the talent that it just exudes out of you, Aaron. Um, no, that's just my background. Oh, it's just your background. That's okay. right. Sorry, that's All what's right. exuding. All right, um, but uh, but like it, to me, it's like you know, were you were you too good for WWE? I mean, in many ways, because you you like you said, a lot of guys may not have that creativity, that spontaneous ability to be the character that you are. And we know there's a lot of jealousy that does exist in pro wrestling. I mean, it's evident. Um, so what was it? What was it that caused that breakdown and then you leaving? Look, somewhere in the office, someone didn't like what was going on. Um, I did an autograph signing about six months ago. And one of the, uh, the people at the signing was like, hey, I just want you to know something. I had a friend who worked in the office. And when they would give house show reports on you, like they, they needed to list like the top five reactions you were always in the top three usually the top two after a while the boss and you know you know who that is mm -hmm. said do not put sandow's name on there anymore okay. that tells me everything i need to know mm -hmm. so to answer your question was i too good for wwe i'd say i'm just right for nwa there you go nice one yeah nice one yeah, yeah. It's definitely allowed you to flourish. Um, like I said, the work that mm -hmm. you've accomplished in the NWA has mm -hmm. been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. you know, um, you. 
So let's go back a little bit then, because uh, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, you're coming back into pro wrestling when you when you first got uh, signed by the NWA. So how did all that come about? Did Billy reach out to you or how did that yeah, happen? Um, I was in Hawaii filming an episode of Magnum P.I. Okay. and enjoying myself. It was Labor Day weekend and I was on Waikiki Beach enjoying myself. I had just eaten P.F. Chang's because much to my chagrin, um, like, Waikiki, it's a tourist trap. <laughs> I was there in Hawaii. There was like one little place that, you know, a Mai Tai, and it wasn't as good as the one on Kowloon's in Boston. Yeah. And uh, and I don't drink, but everyone's like, oh, you have to try it when you have to try it. I'm like, okay, wasn't good. Yeah. Um, but again, had a lovely time on it, uh, on the set and everything. And, and it was, again, I had like, I was there for three and a half weeks, and I had like five days off completely, which was yeah. great. Um, so a lot of fun. Um, and, um, so I get a call, Hey, NWA's in Atlanta. Ah, just, you already got a plane ticket. Just, just go there, whatever, go there. And, um, I just posted this picture on my Instagram, um, uh, recently, cause I, I just kind of recommitted to NWA and someone took a picture. It was Sherry, um, who does our, she's our music director. She's wonderful. Um, took a picture of me and Billy, and and it was the the Georgia setup, and I I like walked into a time machine, and I went, oh, because I was very anti wrestling at the time. Okay, this was like okay, wow, all right. Um, and then my God, we were off to the races. Um, and then kind of developed uh with question mark when that happened. Um, because again, none of that was planned. Um. You know, well, and the character of the question mark was planned, obviously. Um, but then what, like, what is question mark going to be? And Josephus and I, and we were friends before. We met actually at TNA. Um, and then now we're kind of working together. So we're like, all right, cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're sitting in the stands. And I'm like, hey, we need layers to this character. Obviously, it's a throwback from the tights that were actually, like, at one point, Jerry Lawler's. Yeah. Actual <laughs> tight. <laughs> yeah, Jerry Lawler gave him to Tony Fock. Tony Fock sold him to the question mark. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we had that. And um, like that was going right, right? So you had the, the wardrobe was right. Mm -hmm. The presentation, you know, was correct. Um, from there, we had the ability to now add anything we wanted. Because we get direction from the boss, right? So, like, here is the entree. Like, we will be having steak tonight. Yeah. Well, we got a kitchen full of seasonings, and do we want to country fry it? Do we want like what? What do we want to do here? Yeah. How do we want to cook it? Yeah. You know. And we, I think you need to be a karate master because there's that. It had that '80s kind of vibe, right? Like the whole, you know, when when someone would go and come back and learn a special move. Oh, yeah. And they were going to use it to take Dusty out, and you know that. It, but it's, it worked, right? It worked. So yeah. we're going to say, okay, you're from Mongolia, and you have the Mongolian spike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then Billy, <laughs> at the <laughs> at the Atlanta airport, waiting for the, the shuttle, and I and like I hadn't seen him there. Like we just happened to be like like, oh hey, what are you doing here? Coming home from a taping. Um, and then he just goes, Mongrovia, we invent our own country. Okay. Well then Josephus, his, his brother came up with the flag. And then we had, again, we, we were off and running and the karate element, you know, it, it was how he said it. And, and the thing is like everyone, oh, well, then you got to talk and I got to talk. And, no, like you're the guy, the less you say, you need to say one word because you yeah. know what, that one word. You're going to put that on t-shirts and sell it. Yeah. Yeah. And everything I say is going to be geared towards setting you up to say that one word, right? Like I set up the pins, he knocks them down. Yeah. And he was, he trusted me and, and he performed so well. And he, he just, God, I mean, there, there was no other person that could have done that character better. And I trusted him. And I don't do that with a lot of, there's not very many people that I trust professionally out there character wise to just say like go do you 
Yeah. Um, so if I give you my trust like that, you know, especially if I'm involved in the act, um, to me, it's like, it's just, that's testament to, and I know that sounds very egotistical, but no, it's, it's, if I can let my guard down as a performer, meaning if I can stake my professional reputation yeah. on the choices that you're going to make out there, like that, there's no bigger form of trust you can give anyone. And that should be everyone's attitude, by the way. Right. Yeah. yeah it's very um, again, I hope that didn't sound too egotistical, but like yeah. he, he really was just incredible. And then, you know, the, the dimension he brought to it. So like, it was almost like, okay, this is how I think this character should be presented. And then he did everything else. The, just a, from the yellow jumpsuit to the, I, I mean, just, he was just great. And, and there were so many people that went into that and, and, and making it work. And, um, but through that, he like, he was very similar to me and Miz. And, you know, I'm at a point, look, if they're making noise, good or bad, who cares? Um, but he was like, wow, I've never had this. Like he would go and do autograph signings and there would be champions that don't have lines as long as him. Wow. Yeah. Like that, that was for, for almost a year when that took off, right? Right up until the pandemic, that was one of the hottest things in the business. It was. The question mark was, I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty damn cool. And yeah. Kind of through Josephus, I rediscovered my love for wrestling. And, and it was one thing I'd always taken for granted. And, and I don't mean to, like, because I've never not appreciated the relationship I have with the audience to where, like, I, I went away for a couple of years. When I walked out on NWA Power, it was like, boom. Okay, like, great. Like, I never went away. Um, and then... But it's something I just would, oh, okay, I'll do this, whatever. And I don't really, you know, and I, I joke and say I don't like wrestling. Well, obviously, I mean, look what I do now. So, I mean, that's not the case. I just have to say that out loud. And um, again, sarcasm is just is part of who I am. Yeah. But it's, yeah, again, it really kind of ignited something that I've, I've, I may have overlooked mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and underappreciated. You know, not that I never appreciate it, but I may have underappreciated it. And he really kind of put that in perspective for me. And then, uh, you know, it's a shame coming back from the pandemic, you know, things were different. It was, uh, it was very, very, you know, sad that they couldn't, you know, have, uh, have come on the other end of it. But again, you know, every NWA show, there's the Mongrovian flag. Uh, there's just, there, there's always that reminder. And that's testament to, again, like as a family, we have, like we've really grown together, right? And we've lost, we've won. Um, we've had the public love us. We've had the public turn on us. But you know what? We're still here. Yeah, and, and you see that in the reality show. You know, the reality show is part of it, right? And it's, but like, we really, like, like they use the term family and I've never, I've never been in a company where I've truly felt like part of a family because like, we are so interdependent on each other. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but, but in, in the, in the best way possible, yeah. like, like we, we live and die together. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, from again, Sherry, who does the music and a million other jobs, um, you know, Pat Canny having to be in that position and deal with so many different people. Um, you know, me being one of them and, and really Pat, and, you know, through Billy, of course, like facilitating me having to grow up in a way to where it's like, oh, man, if I got to do this, like, all right, like they almost kind of like let it happen naturally. But like, all right, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. And um, and again, it has changed me working with some talent. Like I've, I've kind of changed my perspective on the business and on life. You know, um, I don't have children and, and I don't really care to. But like I can imagine what it must be, you know, when sometimes your kids they make bad choices mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have to let them. Uh, and I'm not talking in life in life. You stop them, but like career wise, yeah, you know, you got to let that go sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, I mean, who knows, right? You, you truly wish the best, but sometimes you got to let nature take its course. And then the flip side, when you're proven right. And then, you know, they, they just excel. Yeah. And the other 
other members of the locker room are coming up to me saying like anything those guys need, we'll take care of. Like, okay, so you're right there. So it's a, it's definitely, it's a learning experience for me because, because part of me and the reason I don't work with everybody, like part of my soul goes into these people. Right. Um, Like I become emotionally invested in their success. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like with the slime balls, it's like I in with Carson, the only thing I want is for them to succeed. Mm-hmm. And I lay out the plan for them. And, you know, some talent you give advice to and yeah, but I want this. I want that. No. Shut up. This is how you're going to dress. This is how you're going to act. This is how you do it. This is how you present it. This is what music you will come down to go. And then now look, there are layers. I, I will do everything to ensure anyone that you, cause you gotta be comfortable. You gotta like, in what you're wearing, what you like, but it's also gotta be right. Yeah. Like just because you like, um, you know, in any band, you know, um, Rob Zombie, yeah. right. Stylistically does not mean that is the best song for your character. It may be Conway 20 for all we know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if it's right, mm-hmm. you can't deny it. And the people will always tell you if it's right or wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's like, look, and we're seeing this in major companies today. And people like to debate and they go to the dirt sheets and this and that. Right. Fans are the ultimate arbiter of what is good and what is bad. And we're seeing with the extremely niche Internet community. Right. Very vocal on social media. What's the rest of America doing? What's the rest of America watching? What does the rest of America want? Yeah, yeah. Right, like going back to the, when you engage someone, like when 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 a company engages the public, what does the public want? What void can we fill? Right. You know, yeah. and that goes, well, look, whether you're bottling water yeah. or selling wrestling. Yeah. How can we improve the lives of our customer? Mm-hmm. You know, look, we want to stay hydrated, NWA, stay entertained it's a very very high pressure i mean god even social media and in movies like where the 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 heaviness yeah right the heaviness of everything has seeped its way even into the way we entertain ourselves Mm -hmm. to where hey my god let's let's have a break from it yeah and if you watch nwa again you watch it with a smile on your face yeah yeah it's like wow this is just you know and and we're only getting better with the character and, and just that's who we are that is who in my opinion like that's who the nwa is and always has been yeah. by the way yeah. we're, we're not straying from our identity mm-hmm. you know to where traditionalists like oh well, i like the way it was better in georgia all right some people like it not some people like this way better mm-hmm. right yeah. either way the soul of our company it is the same yeah and and you know what people can trash it whatever but hey we survived and that's more than a lot of people can say and we do not have an endless cash reserve yeah. we have survived by working together by having a clear vision and by executing yeah that's it do you think aaron um i gotta jump in there do you think like with the bigger companies um because I, I know there was a big company that came out here recently and their ticket sales were abysmal. But it's like they don't care. They they it's it's almost as that they do not care what the people actually want. They'll just put on whatever they want and just, you know, you like it and that's it. It seems like in the 90s, like in the early 90s at least, at least WWF and WCW were trying to give the people what they want. But then they stopped that. I I don't, you know. Let the results be in the fruits of the labor. Okay. NWA, we are a different style of company. We operationally, we do not run every week. Right. right? Yeah. But if you look at our numbers, we're moving like this. Mm-hmm. Now, we're not, you know, again, AEW, they're still drawing, they could be what, 5,000 people a show or something like that? 1,000, 3,000. 4,000, yes. Oh, wow. Okay, so what you're telling me is that AEW is drawing the same amount of people we are in Dothan, Alabama, in Sarasota, Florida. Aaron. 
Aaron, so they came out here. They were out in the Coachella Valley last week for a shooting, uh, for a collision, AW collision. Mm -hmm. They sold 2,900 tickets in an 11,000 uh, seat arena. Okay. And you know what? Maybe there are people that know a lot more than you and I mm -hmm. that yep. are doing business like that. And, and, and maybe there is an ultimate, uh, excuse me for a moment. Sorry, I had a, uh, okay. Can you call it? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, maybe there's again a business plan that we don't know of or whatever. Right. But again, if you just look, and I'm not knocking them, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at what we're doing on not quite the same budget, and we're not doing it every week, but like for a company that people were laughing at a year ago, mm -hmm. to doing what we're doing now. But and, you know, and, and oh, you you we were going to go on CW Network and the stuff that happened in Cleveland. There was an incident in Cleveland mm -hmm. where um, an artistic choice was made. Yep, let's yeah. say, and this artistic choice, to be frank, people said, "Oh my God, this is all, holy crap! Look at this! That list is insane!" And we're kind of popping for it. And then all of a sudden, you know, the internet and and the little trolls came out. And then, oh, they lost their CW, this and that, and the other thing. Nope. Sorry, not the case. Because, um, again, we are the little engine that could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And step by step by step, you know, you have a, like, Every company has their story. Where WWE, that's the big global juggernaut, right? And AEW, they're trying to be like the counterculture and the we are just a pirate ship that we have people from every kind of aspect of the business. And then just, and, and it's interesting because, you know, with who our boss is, there's people from other outside, like, and we are working together to make this thing work and everybody's contributing and everyone's doing their part. And the reason why people come to NWA and they say our locker room so chill, it's because like, we are all working together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we don't have time for like hating on other people and like little group. I mean, and look, there's, there's little, yes. Like wrestling's you always have your people. Right. But like, just because like one group doesn't, you know, like change with another group, that doesn't mean like we're not all hanging out, having fun. I mean, even after the show, like we call each other on the phone, like, like there's this, it's really a team especially yeah. with like the core people and um, because we all depend on each other, but like what we're doing and you, you'll see this. If you haven't watched the show, you'll kind of see it. Uh, the, the, well, not only the NWA power, but Billy Morgan's Tony land, you'll, you, and you'll get the vibe of everyone having to do this to make it work. And, and you know what? Numbers don't lie. And, you know, we do not, we're not following the same business model AEW is. So, but, but if you look at numbers, when we do run shows, we are able, you know, to, to fill, you know, not 11,000 seat arenas, but you give us a, a four or 5,000 seat arena. We'll, we'll get 3000 people in it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know? also, I was going to ask you also, Aaron, because I, I wasn't, didn't you guys release the magazine again? I mean, you guys got a magazine that came oh, out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Is yeah. it still in production? Oh yeah. Yes. Go online. Um, you know, we got the, uh, yeah, the magazine, I believe uh, Pollo does that um, and does a wonderful job mm -hmm. at that. And um, that's the thing. Like, everyone is contributing. And, and when things click, when they start to click as they are now, it's like, okay, like those of us that have been here for a minute, we're like, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's time to, time to do this. So. Yeah. And the magazine's a great touch, too. I mean, I think, you know, I don't know why they did away with that in other places. But, you know, growing up in England, we had the Power Slam magazine. We had Pro Wrestling uh, Illustrated. Yeah, we mm -hmm. had um, the WWF, the WCW magazine. They were all out in the UK when I was no. a kid. But, I, but we used to get a lot of information. But it's good. It's, it's a tangible way for the kids to actually pick something up, hold it, and read it, and go behind the scenes. Yeah. Thing. And so I'm glad that you guys brought that back. 
Uh, it's wonderful. Any uh, any um, um, like uh, characters, action figures, or anything like that uh, coming down? Um, you know what? There's always something down the pipe. I mean, I know our marketing people are always, always kind of doing three steps ahead of us. So, like, I, I couldn't tell you for sure. But, like, with the way we've been going, I mean, like, yeah, stay tuned. You know, NWA merch is, uh, you know, follow them. And uh, they're on Instagram and they're uh, they're all, you know, you got Danny Deals, who is our commentator, which is another like, like Danny Deals, how. Again, he's been around like the character and then like as a commentator, he had so much depth to the program. It's, it's a diff like to have a a heel commentator. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's just that's not trying to sound cool and not trying to be like, yeah, well, I'm, but no, I mean, he is a heel commentator through and through, you know, like when I'm out there. The man's shoes are two thousand dollars a piece. Look at him; he's got and, and just clearly blatantly one sided. But you know what? Yeah. There's something very charming about that, and it, it, it's it's very romantic in the sense of like, yeah, this is what this is how this is supposed to be presented, right? It's the correct way you have you, when you're when you're flipping through the channels, right? Or you you click on it on streaming or whatever. When you see the product, like, oh, okay, well, there's the there's the heel, there's the baby face. This is cool. You know, that's all. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. That's what I say. I, I had the pleasure of doing some commentary with uh, Rock Riddle. Have you ever met Rock Riddle? I think I have. Yeah, I believe. I believe I have. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's a really nice guy. He plays the heel commentator role. So I had the pleasure mm -hmm. of seeing doing commentary with him about seven years ago. But the thing is, I was slanting towards the heel. So you had two hills together, which was kind of <laughs> interesting. It didn't work too very, very long. You know, the booker came over to us and said, hey, one of you needs to. Yeah, you yeah know. I'm not just, you know. So, but, uh, but yeah, and it makes for that drama. It adds to the story. And like you said, it, to be able to clearly identify who is the baby face, who is the heel. Yeah. Um, again, something else that seems to be a lost art um, in many, many companies. So, um I got I would be remiss if I didn't ask as well, because uh, now, I, unless it's incorrect information that I read online, but you are also a Freemason. I, yes. I, yes. OK, so tell us a little bit about that. Then, because my uncle's a Freemason in England. But uh, tell us how that came about. Uh, my grandfather was one. Uh, he passed away when I was one and a half, I think. Um, and it's funny because he had a bank account that by the time I turned 16 was almost to the dollar enough to pay for wrestling school. And, uh, I got that in his Masonic ring and then joined a lodge in, uh, in Kentucky. And then as I was, um, you know, kind of like going throughout life. And then when I was WWE, I did a lot of charity work. Um, and I, it was with uh, the Shriners that are a Masonic organization. Um, and then just happenstance, one of the uh, media people from WWE, uh, he was a Mason and their lodge met in Washington, D.C. So I got to go through the Scottish Rite in Washington, D.C., which was a very, very special thing um, that was done for me by all of the um, the, um, you know, the Freemasons and the brothers there. So that was amazing. And it's it's interesting because people have like everyone has, you know, Freemasons. Oh, well, what do you you know, they, they either associate us with uh, fish fries or world domination and. Yeah. I assure you we're much more the fish fry kind of people because like here, here's the reality, right? Where in any organization, right? There has to be some things that are specific to that organization, but it, it's, it's taking good men and making them better. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can say that like, because of the, because of the, the morals and, and the lessons that I've learned, um, it has definitely shaped me. Uh, to be a better man and it's nothing to do with getting a ring and being able to change traffic lights from you know red to green or anything like that or getting free candy from a vending machine you can't do that like in the simpsons right. but it's like if you really think about and, and you really try to apply and, and and you know you have to do the work yourself mm -hmm. yeah um and that's that's just a really cool thing You've got, you've definitely got some good uh parameters that you've you know grown up in you've got your catholicism you've got mm -hmm. Yeah, your Freemasonry. So, do you think it's? Uh, get inside my head. That's a, what's that? <laughs> I said, you want to get inside my head? That's pretty. <laughs> it's, it's interesting, but but really, no. I mean, when when it comes down to it, there's nothing, nothing, um, you know, within the the Masonic organization and the teachings uh, contained therein that I find contradictory to 
anything I have learned in the Catholic Church. And, I, and I've also, you know, I, I have um, a spiritual director that is a, a Catholic. Um, actually, two of them, you think of. I have a Franciscan and a Jesuit, so I have two interesting perspectives there. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's that's it. That's uh, that's kind of the that's kind of the four one one on my uh, my moral life. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely it's kept you grounded, like you mentioned there. You don't drink as well, which is fantastic. You know? Well, no, I mean I drink once a year, right? Like it's not like I'm anti sober. Yeah. Um, I drink once a year at Derby. I mean, and maybe if I'm out and about, like if there's a social thing at all, it's it's the world's best old fashioned. Like, I'll, yeah. but I'm not. I don't have more than one. I don't drink beer at yeah. all. Right. Um, but like Derby, hey, you know, when you're at the track, you got to have your mint juleps. <laughs> the way it is. Yeah. So, so, so what are your interests then? You mentioned one that any other interests outside of pro wrestling? I mean, obviously you're acting, you, you know, you, you're great, you know. But... Oh, thank you. Um, I, no, I'll, I'll be very honest with you. Like I am very, like my, my work now, especially because I'm working with other people that, that kind of is, um, it's a driving force in my life. Um, I mean, I do, I do like, you know, I'm starting to do jujitsu and stuff now um, just because it's, it's, it's something to learn and it gives my, when, when it's bad enough when I have my brain turned on with me, but like if we're we're thinking like, you know, um, I'll make like the Simpsons analogy with like you know Homer at the nuclear power plant when there's like all those switches. It's like me yeah. having to turn on those overdrive switches for other people now, where my I'm thinking about like twelve things at once for that, and yeah. whew, you know yeah. to to give me that contrast yeah. of like just not think about it for a while. Yeah, and it's it's I need the mental break because it, it's weird as an artist. Like I said, when you commit to something, mm. you don't shut it off. Uh, at least I can't. Like I, it is impossible for me to separate committing, and like like I don't have a default mode. If, if there is something that needs to get done, like and, and you know, if I have to have talent up to speed for a certain at a certain date, until that date comes, I am not going to rest. Right. So what, like, again, training like, with martial arts and things like that, it, like, it gives me a break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it literally, I have to think about this so I can't think about that. And because my mind's not going to rest. When I sleep, I sleep really good. Um, you know, and again, I've been doing some meditation and things like that, which are, I guess that's, yeah, I, I could be into that, like, more kind of that kind of, like, spiritual side. Um, that's what I, that, that could be another interest. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm. I, I'm I'm pretty simple and like focused mm -hmm. on that as well. Yeah. Well, I think it comes with any artist as well. Cause when you were saying that I can certainly, you know, I certainly feel you on that because I, I feel the same way. You know, I've been an artist my whole life, studied graphic design and art, you know, was into yeah. drama and all that. So I, I, I hear you the same thing. Once you set your mind to something it, mm -hmm. you can't, it doesn't switch off until that. Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's, it's attained. Or it's accomplished mm -hmm. so that makes sense but that's just you know that's just the way god made you you know i mean ultimately that's the the way exactly. that, you know you're made and yeah. why you can do what you do you know we all have our thing it's, it's 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 wonderful um okay then aaron well i tell you what i'm gonna have a quick word with you after i stop the recording here but uh i want to thank you uh for joining us today it's been a tremendous conversation really engaging really entertaining and thank you for sharing some of your time with us and some of your stories here for the audience. So um, until next time, everybody, Victor, what you must, Victor, in your life. I've been Amir. This has been Aaron Stevens. This has been Victoire. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Victoire. I have been your host, Amir, and I would like to encourage each and every one of you to subscribe to our channel, like, and share our videos. It helps us spread these inspirational stories much further. Until next time, Victor, which you must victor in your life. This has been Victoire.